when I, my first year at university, I had Christian friends who tried to get hold of me. They knew I wasn't a Christian and they wanted, invited me to go to meetings and go to their Bible studies and things. And they then organized me to go for a camp at Christmas. And I heard the gospel. I heard the truth that God so loved me as an individual. He knew me by name, so loved me that he sent his son Jesus to die for me, for my sins, that I couldn't have... I was so captivated by the wonder of this story. And I can only say that really, that night when I first heard the gospel, I fell in love with Jesus. And that has been my motivation ever since. That has never changed for me. It's always the wonder of the fact he so loves us. He came down from heaven to our mucky old earth and live amongst us mucky old people in order to save us. And I know from the very first night that I was saved, I had this overwhelming desire. I wanted to serve him. I would do anything he asked. I'd go anywhere he sent me. I just, I wanted to let him know I loved him because he so loved me. And that has honestly never changed. It's come in different circumstances, come through different ways, but always the, 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 root, the root motivation in me uh, brought me into WEC and kept me there and took me out to Congo and kept me there. It's always been this tremendous love of God for us individuals that we might so love others with his love that they too would come to know forgiveness of sins. All of us have the privilege of being called to be his servants. That's just so wonderful. Where, where Jesus said he himself did not come to be served, but to serve and to give. And if we had this in the back of our hearts all the time, we're not being called to some big outward thing or thing that we be written about or uh, publicized, but that we're called to serve him. And we serve him because we love him. Then whatever we're doing, we're doing for Jesus and doing for him to be uplifted. Uh, I think that would be my major thing I'd like to leave with young people today, to think in those terms of putting Jesus first. And when there's a problem, and when you really feel you, you really reach the end of your tether, he's there. He knows, he's been through it all, and he's there to encourage you and strengthen you and help you and prompt you all the way that even if you can't see any point in what you're doing, and if it, if it doesn't seem, sometimes it does seem pretty pointless, but nevertheless, it's for him. And he knows what he's doing and why. And it, it just does all fit in, it's amazing. <laughs> yes, I would like to leave with, with all of you. When I first came to know that Jesus loved me, that first night at camp, and I was given a Bible, which I'd never had before. And the leader of the meeting wrote in my Bible, Philippians 3, verse 10. And uh, he, he wrote the reference in, and then he said the words to me. He said, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. And he said to me, he said, tonight you've come to the beginning of that verse. I want to know Christ. He says, my prayer for you in the years that lie ahead is that you come to know more and more the power of his resurrection. And then very quietly and looking straight at me, he said, maybe one day God will give you the privilege of sharing in the fellowship of his sufferings. I'd been a Christian about an hour. And here I've been told there was a privilege to suffer. And Yet as I look back, I can say, thank you, God, that you gave me that the first night that I was saved, that it is a privilege to share in the sufferings of Christ, however they come, whatever level they are, and that uh, he, he's just so good. To, and that word privilege became very precious to me ever since, that it's, it's privilege. And when you're having a tough struggle, 
when things aren't going according to plan. When, as a surgeon, you could say, in the middle of an operation, and you just don't know what to do next, and nobody to help you. At those moments, whatever it is, it'll be different for each one of us. But in that minute, it's a privilege. It's a privilege you're sharing with him in some part of the suffering. And as you say, privilege in your mind, the burden lifts. And you suddenly realize, how wonderful that God is willing to choose me to give me the privilege of serving him. And uh, I have just shared that in my Right now, uh, I'm conscious that I am old. And people ask me in church, how are you? And I just tend to, tend to say, well, I'm old. But, and as you get older and the memories go and you become forgetful and you can't think of words, you can't recognize people or names, but it's all privilege. And just each time get back on it, it's God's privilege. And I mean, there's no question, but in these last few months, um, I have had a growing urge, a longing for him to call me so I can go home. But he hasn't chosen to. I'm still here. Uh, and I mean, well, he's got a job. People say to me, well, he's got a job for you, that's why you're here. He hasn't finished with you yet. Uh, I know, but I don't find it easy to rejoice in that, but it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be still here, and he is choosing the when. And uh, I just leave that with older friends. Keep on trusting right to the end. <laughs>